Hi booktube, it's Andrea, how are you? Um, I've been a bit uh, absent without leave lately, I know, it's because it's been very hot and I've been on late and I'm not good in the heat. And the week before that I was on holiday and I was away so I didn't have any time to make any videos. I've also not been feeling 100% but hopefully I shall make it make some more videos soon which is what I want to do. Now, yes, I said I'm not very good in the heat. Now, it's not hot to the point that it's like some places in America or the Sahara but for the UK for us to be like around the mid late 20s you know around 80 70 80 79 80 degrees it's quite hot and I don't do very well in the heat I'm not gonna lie I don't know what's going on with this light because I think I need to readjust my lighting and I'll do that um, shortly I'll put the books this side when I show them to you um but I'm not going to hate, I'm not, I'm going to say I don't like the heat, I don't like the hot weather and all I'm going to say is I annoy everybody saying roll on bloody winter, that's all I'm saying, roll on winter. I am a winter girl, I prefer the winter, I'd rather go out for a walk in the snow than in the sunshine, I'm sorry but that's just me. So I have got quite a big book haul because somebody I know gave me a lot of books. Now they did say they were going to give me all 30 in the series that they had, there are three missing. That might just mean that they're in the house somewhere and I can't find them but I'll show you the, the ones that they did give me. And then of course there's all the books I bought myself, were given or got for my birthday and so on because my birthday was in June. So the majority of the books that this person gave me are by Cynthia Harrod Eagles and it's a series called Dynasty, um, the Moreland Dynasty and the first one is called The Founding. Let's put it up this side because mm, it's shining a bit on that side but that's fine. I must sort the lights out it's because this room I film in is a bit of a mess at the moment because we're having a bit of a sort out so nothing's where it should be. So this is the first book in the series it's called The Founding and it first says power and prestige are the burning ambitions of the domineering dower Edmund Morland rich sheep farmer and landover he arranges landowner he arranges a marriage, the first giant step in the founding of the Morning Dynasty, hence the title, the founding. Robert, his son, more poet than soldier, idolises his pride, yet proud young bride, Eleanor, ward of the powerful Beaufort family, but she is outraged. Eleanor's consuming secret passion is for Richard, Duke of York, but duty is held supreme and she must obey. Against the turbulent years of the Wars of the Roses, this epic unfolds a passionate saga of hatred, war and fierce signs. So it is a historical romance. As you can see, these books have been well loved and well read. They're falling apart. But the person that gave me these was, it was either I have them or they got chucked. They're not really good condition to go to even a charity shop. So I thought I'd read them, pass them to my mum so she likes them. If I really enjoy them, I will pick up the three that's missing. So, I also got book two, The Dark Rose. So this, I mean, I like historical fiction and it is a bit of romance as well, which is nice. So in this one, the marriage of Eleanor Courtney and Robert Morland heralded the founding of the Great Morland Dynasty. Now Paul, their great grandson, is caught up in the conflict of kings and seas. Within his family, a bitter struggle, bearing seeds of death and destruction. And Nanette, his beloved niece, made him wait into the tragic Anne Boleyn is swept into the flamboyant intrigues of life at court until leaving a heartbreak behind she's claimed by a passionate love. A magnificent saga of revenge, glory and intrigue in the turbulent needs of the early Tudors as the Morlins crest the waves of power. Book three is called The Princeling. As you can see this one's well read, the covers come off. And this one starts, so this one should be good. Uh, volume three, Elizabeth I is now England's queen and the Catholic Morelands are threatened by the upsurge of Protestants. Mm -hmm. Can't even say that. They must seek new spheres of influence if they're to restore family fortunes. John, heir to Morland Place, rides north to wed the daughter of Black Will Percy, a Borderland cattle lord. He learns through the blood and butter how to win proud Mary's heart. Latisse, his gentle sister, is married to the ruthless, ambitious Scottish Baron, Lord Robert Hamilton, who teaches her the bitter lesson of survival in the bleak and treacherous court of Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, yeah, so that's book three. I'll just give you a quick overview. I'm not going to go through. Well, there was real day just looking at these ones. Um, book four is The Oak Apple. And so this is during Charles I's reign. Book five is The Black Pearl. And this is Cromwell's Commonwealth and the restoration of Charles II. So they, they really, basically goes from the War of the Roses right through to World War II. Um, so this is Charles, uh, the long shadow is, focuses on Charles II. 
and then the coming reign of James James the second the Chevalier is a Stuart story James the second um, again story and then James the third comes to claim the Stuart throne can I learn a, bit, a fair bit about history in these? And then book eight is The Maiden. I'm just having a quick look at it. So we've got The Bloody Massacre of uh, Culloden in here. And then we've got Nine the Flood Tide. Revolution is on its way, apparently. We've got The Tangled Thread which is book 10. So let's see what happens in this one. This is the French Revolution. I'm missing book 11. So if it turns up or I have to go and buy it, obviously I'll haul it then. And this one is book 12, which is the victory. And this is a Napoleon. It's poised to invade England. Yeah, right, because that'll never happen. Um, then we've got the Regency, book 13. So that's obviously about the Regency period, that should be a good one. Then we've got the Campaigners. So it's 1815 now. So it would be interesting to follow one family from the beginning through to World War II. Um, and then this one is literally just called The Reckoning. So it's a piece of 1815 brings no plenty to Britain. Napoleon has been beaten, but the cost of rage and inflation and post-war depression. There you go. Then we've got book 16, The Devil's Horse. This is the 1820s. So we're moving into the industrial age of gaslighting and power and steam locomotives are coming. So that's... Uh, Interesting. So this one, there's people in Manchester, and this one goes to Manchester. So it's all, it goes all over the country. Then book 17 is The Poisoned Tree, or The Poison Tree. So we're into William the Fourth reign. It's in New England. The Abyss is book 18. And this is, uh, the railways have come to the UK and they're looking to drive a line all the way from Liverpool to London. And then we've got book 19, which is uh, The Hidden Shore. <laughs> Just to see if I can see what it says about when it is not. We're moving forward and then we've got book 20, which is Win The Winter Journey. Which is eight, now we're in nineteen. We're in eighteen fifty one. So there's a war breaking out against Russia. This is the Crimean. Then we jump to book uh, twenty one. And the Outcast, and as I think this is War of uh, American War of Independence here, which is eighteen fifty seven. There's obviously something going to, you know, there's obviously a bit about some of the family, obviously, in America, which would be very fascinating, I think. Book, we then jump to, from book 21 to 23, so I'm missing 22. And it's 1874. So we're lovely in the Victorian period now. Very, very good. 1885 is the setting for The Homecoming. Oh, the Moorland place, the family seat has fallen on hard times, fire damaged, dilapidated and shorn of much of its land. Sounds interesting. We've got book 25, so I think I've jumped a book, have I? Yeah, no, I haven't, right. And it's 1898, so we've skipped the Jack the Ripper, it's a shame there's no Jack the Ripper in there. So yes, it's um, Victorian, end of the Victorian era now, 1898. And then the next one is called The Dream Kingdom and it's 1908 in London, it's Edwardian England. And here, here we are, Uncle Teddy sees his business expanding when the keels are laid in Belfast for the new superliners Olympic and Titanic he secures a lucrative contact to supply the furnishings. So that should be quite interesting. 
And book 27 is The Restless Sea. And now it's 1912. Uh, so we'll read this one. Um, England 1912, the largest, most luxurious ship the world has ever seen is about to make its maiden voyage. Teddy Morland will be aboard the Titanic along with his niece Lizzie and her husband and children on their way to start a new life in Arizona. The nation fill, thrills with patriotic pride in this masterwork of British engineering. But back home at Morland Place, Alice, Teddy's pregnant wife, is consumed with nameless anxiety and Lizzie's mother, Henrietta, fears she'll never see her daughter again. So that should be quite interesting because it's uh, going to be partly set aboard the Titanic and that's always fascinating and then book 28 is The White Road and this is 1914 so it's the onset of World War One. and the last one I have is book 29 which is The Burning Roses And it's 1915 now, so war is still ongoing. But um, the war, you know, the, it is still going on. So now I don't know whether or not there is one after. There are a few I'm missing, so I will get them if I enjoy them. And. Um, yeah, so those are the books that I was given to my friend from the theatre. Thank you so much if you're watching this. I really am going to uh, enjoy this. Now, another friend of mine, Sue, at work, gave me two books this month that she'd finished, said they were really good. And that's Lisa Jackson's Hot Blooded. So, a prostitute lies strangled in a seasy French Quarter hotel room in New Orleans. Miles away in a rambling plantation house on the sultry shores of Lake Pontchart. Ponchartrain, a popular late night radio TV host, radio host Dr. Samantha Leeds receives a threatening phone call all in a day's work for a celebrity. Who would link the two and what is Samantha's connection to the next murder victim? Detective Rick Bentz is convinced that the serial killer prowling in the shadowy streets of New Orleans is close to her. She doesn't trust anyone. Someone has discovered Samantha's darkest secret. Somebody is convinced that lives must be sacrificed to pay for her sins. So far, the victims have been strangers. But as a cunning, cold-blooded killer grows bolder, Samantha's wonders in dread if she will be the next to die. So I love this sort of thriller, so I'm looking forward to that. As you can see, I've added quite a lot to my TBR this month. So he also gave me a Ricardo, um, a Richard Montanari book called The Echo Man. She did rip a bit off the cover because she needs something to make a note on, but it is a, a knackered book anyway. So and I'll pass this on to somebody later when I've finished it. And it's Fallen in Philadelphia and the mutilated body of a man is found in one of the poorest neighbourhoods of the city. The victim has been viciously tortured to death in its all work of a sadistic mind in free fall. When homicide detective Kevin Byrne and Jessica Balzano investigate, they soon realise that their crime scene is linked to the past. Eight years ago, another body was found in the same place, in the same position, killed in the same manner. That case was never closed. Apart from their killer's unusual calling cards, the crime scene photos, past and present, are identical. As another brutalised body appears, then another, it becomes horrifyingly clear that someone is recreating unsolved murders from Philadelphia's past in the most sinister of ways, and the killer is closer than they think. That actually sounds brilliant I might actually read that next <laughs> it sounds really good I'm gonna put that in a separate pile then of course there was the book that I got in my book and a brew which was Dire Shame by Mark Billingham so I have already opened this and I did an unboxing of this on my channel if I remember I'll pop the link to that video down below so you can go and check it out and see what I think of this book um like I said, I was away for a part of June, so I bought um, a book to take with me, even though I already had two books to take with me. Yay! And I read all three of the books I took with me. And so one of the books I bought was Peter James Need You Dead. You all know I'm a massive Peter James fan. I love his books. I love his um, uh, Roy Grace, which this is, and I like his Supernatural ones. So this is another Roy Grace one. And basically the, pro the premise is Laura, Lorna Belling is desperate to escape the marriage from hell. She falls for the charms of a man who promises her the earth. But as Luna, Lorna so soon finds, life seldom follows the plan if made. A chance photograph on a client's mobile phone changes everything for her. When the body of a woman is found in a bath in Brighton, Detective Superintendent Roy Grace is called to the scene. At first it looks like an open and shut case with a clear prime suspect. Then other scenarios began to present themselves. 
Um, each of them tantalisingly plausible until sudden turn events to his utter disbelief, the case turns more sinister than Grace could have ever imagined. I really enjoyed this, but you'll see about this in my wrap up when I do do it in the next day or so. To continue with Missy, the binge readers, Stephen King, Readathon. I'm doing really well with this. I'm actually kept up to date. I got the next two in the Dark Tower series, which is The Wastelands, which is book three, and basically the third novel. Roland has altered Carr by saving the life of Jake Chambers in New York. Now they exist in different worlds, paradoxically sharing memories. Roland, Susanna, and Eddie must try and draw Jake into Midworld and then follow the path of the beam through an urban wasteland to the Dark Tower. Pursued by the ageless, ageless stranger, Roland and his friends cross a desert of damnation in this macabre new world as revelations began to unfold about who and what is driving forward. I'm really enjoying this series. So that was June's book. Yeah, the same. I read that when I was on holiday. And of course, July's book is uh, Wizard and Glass, book four. Have you noticed that these books are getting bigger with every single volume? The first one was really thin. And then they're getting bigger and uh, bigger and bigger. So I'm looking forward to this one. And this one says, in a terrifying journey where hidden dangers lurk at every junction, the pilgrims find themselves stranded in an alternative version of Topeka, Kansas, that has been ravaged by a super flu virus. While following the deserted highway towards a distant glass palace, <laughs> Roland recounts the tragic story about a seaside town called Hambury where he fell in love with a girl named Susan Delgado and when he and his old tet mates Alan and Cuthbert battled the forces of an evil harrier who ignited Midworld's final war. Now I have to say about this, about what the, the, the glass city, um, I flicked through this and I did see that um, uh, towards the end the Wizard of Oz comes into it somehow so I'm looking forward to finding out exactly how with that one. It was my birthday in June, as I mentioned, I was away for my birthday, but I did get some books in June from my mum and my brother, my mum and dad and my brother. Um, I did get some vouchers for other books, but they will be in July's haul. Just because June's haul is so big, I thought, yeah, we're, we're heading towards 20 minutes here. So. I thought I'd, um, I'll just put them in July's haul, so July's haul won't, won't be terribly small. Now, a few months ago, I've just found another one of those books. I found The Emperor, which is book 11. It was behind me. So, like I said, they'll probably turn up all over the place. Let me just do this one. So The Emperor, book 11, by Cynthia Harrod Eagle. is uh, it's the 18th century. It draws to a close. So that one goes in that pile. <laughs> I knew there'd be more here. It's because there's so many of them. I was trying to put them in a pile. So I could... I'm just seeing if I can find any more of them. Um, haul them. And as you can see, <laughs> there's so many of them. they just got everywhere. So a few months ago I went to Tarver Books and you might have seen in my book haul, I think it was March or April, March I think, something like that. I went and I bought some books in Octavo Books. Two of them were by Wani Lee and they were Cardiff Bay Investigations and I think they were book three and four or three and five. For, for my birthday my brother Chris bought me the three that I was missing which was, they, these three were on my Amazon wish list. So thank you Chris. So the first one is Jack Knifed. Um, Mark Wilson is throwing a party. It's a Eurovision party. Everybody I know throws those, so it's believable, especially in Cardiff. But when friends turn up to his Cardiff home, there is no sign of the popular host. His brutally butchered body lies across the kitchen counter next to the party food. Honestly. DCI Phelps and his team are called in to investigate and Mark's traumatic early life is revealed. Was his killer someone from his past? Was his sexuality a motive? What about his violent homophobic father or his estranged drug addicted sister Amy who harbours a hatred for her brother? As the body count rises, Phelps and Sergeant Matt Pryor soon realise they are on the trail of a serial killer. I like books set in Cardiff or places I know because you go, oh I've been there, <laughs> oh I know that road. It's really sad but you do, you do, you do, you go, oh I've been there. So the, the second uh, book in the series is The Cooper's Field Murder. Anybody who's ever been to Cardiff will know of Cooper's Field. They have great events there, including Pride. Love Cooper's Field. So this one is uh, about... The naked decomposing body of a woman is discovered in a Cardiff beauty spot. But who is she and how did she meet her death? When DCI Martin Phelps and his team are called into their investigations, leave them to the Parkland nursing home. There, nurse Sarah Thomas, a witness to the grim discoveries dealing with the sudden death of one of her favourite residents, Colin James. 
The unexpected reactions of the three closest to the old man surprised DCI Phelps and his team. Was Callie Collins' death due to natural causes, or is there something more sinister afoot at Parkland? I gotta be honest, like I said, I love anything where I know the places that, you know, I've, there's a book called Diva Las Vegas, and I've been to Las Vegas, and they go to a bar called Pepper, but and I was like, I've been in that place, and I got a bit excited, so you can imagine how I can feel with books that are literally just set down the road. And the third book I've got is Never Dead. And this one says, the elderly man who died on a Cardiff train was murdered, poisoned by one of the other passengers, but who? There's a photograph in the dead man's pocket, a photograph that matches one owned by young professional Ellie Bevan. Is it just a coincidence that Ellie's the one who stayed with the body until the police arrive? Or did she have a more sinister reason for sticking around? Matt's boss, DCI Martin Phelps, is delving into a tricky case of his own. The new superintendent is determined to clear up any old cases with a whiff of police corruption about them, and Phelps is sent to investigate the decade-old murder of a, son, a young Somali man, and he soon discovers that the police reports are filled with errors. Sloppy detective work, or a cover-up. Both Pryor and Phelps soon find themselves surprisingly drawn towards investigating a respected humanitarian charity by important people. The organisation isn't quite what it seems and a wrong, dis wrong move could spell disaster. So these aren't very long books. They average around 250 pages I would say. Yeah about 250 pages. So they're really really quick reads but they are so interesting. I have read Jackknife. It will be in my July wrap up because it was the first book I read in July. So you'll have to wait a while to find out exactly what I thought about it. And we're on to the last two books which were from my mum and dad. They know my um, fascination with all things Hollywood, especially from, I would say, from the beginnings of Hollywood until around 1970, although some of the 70s and 80s is also it, but it's the classic Hollywood I like. So they got me two books. The first book is The Hollywood Book of Death by James Robert Parrish. And basically, um, it just gives you an overview of their deaths and, and they're set into different categories so you've got um, accidental deaths, alcohol and drugs, in obscurity, murders, natural causes, puzzling deaths, suicides, so like that and on the back it says and I can actually uh, answer the three questions that they do ask you which blonde bombshell died with a card load of chihuahuas on board? Jane Manfield what bloodthirsty film star insisted on being buried in his Dracula cape? Bella Lugosi. And which washed up starlet took a swan dive off the Hollywood sign? Peg Entwistle. There you go. The Hollywood Book of Death is an exhaustive encyclopedia of celebrity death that tells all. Organised according to type of death from accidental to suicide, these pages provide complete accounts of more than 125 celebrity departures from John Barrymore, Veronica Lake, John Belushi to Audrey Hepburn, Chris Farley and Rock Hudson. Hollywood expert and author James Robert Parrish digs up all the deadly facts, from cost of coffins to famous last words. Parrish leaves no tombstone unturned as he re resurrects the macabre details of the entertainment interest, industries are dearly departed. So, inside you'll find a comprehensive necrology of nearly 6,000 illustrious, illustrious actors and directors, an alphabetical list of notable US cemeteries and their celeb celebrated entombed, more than 100 rare black and white photos of the featured stars, real suicide notes eerily reproduced word for word for word, concise bios of the 125 profiled stars detailing how they lived and died. It isn't a mere morbid fascination that attracts us to celebrity deaths. True fans seek an enduring connection to their favourite former luminaries of the silver screen, and learning how they died is one way of making that connection. The Hollywood Book of Death is an essential pop culture reference that movie fans will die for. So yeah, I, I like books like this. I think my parents think I'm morbid. But on a lighter and more happier Hollywood note, they also got me... Uh, all the, of all the gin joints, written by Mark Bailey, illustrated by Edward Hemingway, stumbling through Hollywood history with 40 cocktail recipes. And look at the illustrations, they are absolutely gorgeous. So, um, basically, it's just a book, it's a history of Hollywood in little sections. So, for instance, you've got Mabel Normans and a little cartoon, all the different stars some of the films, uh, some of the drinks, so, so there's 
little facts like Richard Harris could drink two bottles of vodka a day to Burton's three though that is hardly indicative of restraint and usually finished by 7 p.m. at which time he would bake open a bottle of brandy and a bottle of port and mix the two they are mad and then they've got little recipes like bourbon old fashioned and the old restaurants and there's awesome wells there's how to make a Shirley Temple anime Wong Dragon's Den so here's the post-war era so we've got Humphrey Bogart Lon Chaney Jr Montgomery Clift John Ford and then there's a, a John Ford's torpedo joy juice and we've got Ava Gardner the Formosa Cafe, a Judy Garland, the Macombo, Jackie Gleason, Carrie Grant, Sterling Hayden, William Holden, John Houston, Robert Mitchum, and they've even got the, the drinks they drink. So David Niven, Jack Palance, Anthony Quinn, Nicholas Ray, Lawrence Tierney, John Wayne. And, and, and so on, you got Richard Burton, all sorts of different people and the different drinks. It's a lovely little book and I think it's going to be quite fun to read. So, yeah. So that was the other one I got from my mum and dad for my birthday. So this video is like 25 minutes long. It's a lot of books. I already have a TBR of well over 100. Well, it's actually well over 1,000 if you carry all the, the Kindle books. Because I don't actually haul those. I think I have a problem. This is why I'm buying colouring books and colouring. But I'm still getting a lot of books. I, I definitely have a book problem. Oh, well, never mind. There are worse problems to have. First world problems. I, if it's a book problem, I'm happy with that. So those are all the books I got in the month of June. I am slowly working my way through all of your book hauls because they are my favourites. I love to see what you're reading. I love to see what you recommend people to read. Have you read any of these books? Have you read this whole Dynasty Saga thing that I've been given? Is it good? Um, have you read any of the other books I've mentioned? If you have, leave them a comment below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. And I will be hopefully back really, really soon with my June wrap up, as well as some other bookish bits and pieces. I know I've been really lax lately, but I hope to be back soon. I'm starting to feel better now. So I will see you soon, booktube. Bye.